Hello, this is channel Easy Self Host. This video is the third episode of self hosting tutorial. We're going to talk about how to manage and version control your self hosting configurations, like Docker Compose and proxy configurations, and also how to backup and migrate your application data. With these skills, you can easily spin up new self hosted applications and migrate your apps from one server to another without headaches. The tools we're going to use include Git and GitHub. That is for managing our configurations and our clone with a cloud storage provider like Cloudflare R2 for our application data. In the last video, we configured our containers using a Docker Compose file and defined the proxy rule using a caddy file. So first, let's copy these files to a GitHub repository. To get started, let's go to github.com and sign up an account if you don't have one already. After signing up, you will land in your GitHub dashboard. Here, let's create a repository for our configurations. We can name our repo self-hosted apps and make sure the repository is private since we don't want anyone else to see our configurations. After this, we can create our repository. Now we have an empty repository and we can start creating files. First, let's create our caddy file here and let's put it in its own directory. Then we can go to the server command line and print out the caddy file we created before. So we can copy it back to the GitHub editor. In Git, we need to commit the changes to save the file in our repository. For each commit, we need to describe the changes in the commit message. Now we have the caddy file in our repository. Next, we are going to add our Docker Compose file. There is another way we can edit file directly in GitHub. You can simply press dot on your keyboard and it will bring up a VS Code editor. Here we can see all the files in our repository. And then we create our Docker Compose file. To grab our file content, let's go back to the server command line again and print out the Docker Compose file we had before. And then we can copy it back to the editor. For the Docker Compose, we need to make one change before committing. That is the path to the caddy file. Since now we need to use the caddy file in the repository instead of the old caddy file on the server. Then we can go to the source control section and commit a change for adding a new Docker Compose file. Then we can go to the GitHub page by simply change the github.dev to github.com in the address bar. Now we have everything on GitHub repo. We are going to use this version on our server. To do that, we need to give our server the permission to access this repo. Let's go to the GitHub setting and then click SSH and the GPG keys. We can add the public key of our server here so GitHub can recognize our server. And let's generate an SSH key on our server. And this is the command to generate SSH key. The ED25519 represents the algorithm we are going to use. And you also need an email address here. You can press enter for all the questions here to use the default value. And after this, your SSH key is generated. The public key is located at the path in the message. We can print it out using the cat command, followed by its relative path. And then let's copy the public key. And we can go back to the GitHub page and create an SSH key using the one we just created. Now let's go to the GitHub repo page and copy the SSH repo path. So we can clone it on our server using this path. In the server command line, let's type git clone followed by the path we just copied. And this will clone all the files we have in the repo to the server. We can print out the directory to check this. To use the new compose file in the repository, we need to first bring down the old compose file. Let's go to the my apps directory which has the original docker compose file. And here let's execute docker compose down. And now all the containers are stopped and removed. And now let's change the directory to the new repo path which has our new docker compose file. And here we execute docker compose up dash d to bring up the docker containers. Now we can go to the mammals app and refresh the page to check if the new containers are running. Now we have everything running as before, but using the GitHub repo as our configuration source. Now let me show you how we can easily add more apps to our configuration. On the GitHub page, let's open the web editor like before. And in the Docker Compose file, we can add a new service by adding a new section. As an example, let's add an app called Sterling PDF, which is a great PDF utility app since the app won't store any data. We can just specify the image and the container name. 
And we also need to create a new proxy rule for it. So let's go to the caddy file and add a new section for this. We can use the domain name pdf.goselfhost.com. The reverse proxy target is starting pdf colon 8080. And again, the port 8080 is defined by the image author. You can always find this magic number on their websites. Then let's go to the source control section and create a commit for both changes. A git commit can actually contain multiple file changes. Now we can go to the server command line and enter our repo path. We execute git pull to pull the new changes in the repo. We can verify this by printing out the docker compose file. And now we can run docker compose app again to run the new containers. Before we can access our new app, let's not forget to add DNS setting for the new subdomain name. Let's go to the Cloudflare DNS setting and point the PDF domain name to the same IP address as the two other apps. And then we can go back to the server command line and restart the caddy container to let it use the new caddy file configuration. And now we can try opening the new PDF app with the address pdf.goselfhost.com. And here is turning PDF. And you can use it to do all kinds of PDF operations. And this concludes the topic of how to use GitHub to manage your self-hosting configurations. And then how do we back up and migrate our application data? Application data is different from the configurations, that they are mostly not text files so they cannot be version controlled and managed in a Git repository. So instead we are going to use cloud storage services, which are designed to store large binary data. So it's great for us to backing up our application data. There are many cloud storage services like AWS S3 and Google Cloud Storage, but what we are going to use is Cloudflare R2. Since we have a Cloudflare account already and it's free for us to use if our data is less than 10 gigabytes. To use it, we can go to the Cloudflare homepage and then go to the R2 section. Here we click the button to activate our R2 service. And after this, we can start by creating a storage bucket and give the bucket a meaningful name. I'm using the name App Data Backup, and we are going to store our app data in this bucket. To do that, we are going to use a command line tool called rclone, which supports copying files between local file system and cloud storage. To install it on our server, let's first execute apt update. And after this, run the command apt install rclone. After it's installed, we can start configuring it using the command rclone config. You will be prompted a few questions for rclone to access the Cloudflare buckets. First, you need a name for this remote location. I'm using the name Cloudflare R2. Next, you will need to choose the storage backend. For Cloudflare R2, you need to find the storage that's Amazon S3 compliant. So let's type 4 for this question. Next question is the S3 provider. Some newer version of our clone have the Cloudflare choice here, but mine doesn't have that yet. So we can choose the last value, which is any other S3 compliant provider. Then let's choose enter AWS credential. And now you will need to create a key pair for our clone to access your cloud storage bucket. Let's go to the R2 dashboard and navigate to manage R2 API tokens and then click create API token. Here let's choose object read and write since that's what our clone is going to do. You can choose apply to specific buckets only to limit the power of this token. You can choose to set TTL or client IP address to make the token more secure. Then let's create the token. Here we need to copy the access key ID and the secret key back to the server. First let's copy the key ID to the question that's prompted right now. Next, we need to grab the secret access key value. Then let's choose V4 signature and an empty region for the next question. Then for the endpoint, you need to find your R2 account ID in Cloudflare. It's located at the R2 overview dashboard. After you copy this ID, you can start typing in your command line, starting with the HTTPS schema, followed by your account ID, and then .r2.cloudflarestorage.com. For the questions after this, you can all choose the default value. In the end, let's choose Q to exit the configuration steps. And now we can start using our clone. Now let's navigate to our home directory, which has the memos and vote warden directory. And before we backing up the memos directory to the cloud, we need to stop the memos container. That's to prevent us from backing up corrupted data. Next, we can use the rclone copy command to back up our memos data. The source of this command is memos directory in local file system. 
and the destination starts with the remote name, which in this case is Cloudflare-R2, then followed by colon and bucket name, which is app data backup as we created earlier. Then it's the path you want to store your data in the bucket. We can just use the same name as our local directory. After the command finish, your data is successfully backup to the Cloudflare R2. And you can go to your bucket page to check that. For memos, you can see a database file in the bucket. You can do the same thing for the World Warden app. First, stop the container. And then use our clone to copy the directory to the cloud bucket. You will also see the World Warden directory in the bucket page. Next, you can start your containers again. Now let's explore how do we restore data from the cloud to local storage. We're going to stop the Mammoth container and remove its data directory to emulate the case that we are on a new server. On the new server, we can reconfigure our clone. We can use the our clone copy command to copy the data on the cloud to the local storage. The source is the remote location this time and the destination is local storage. After this command, you will see the Mammoth directory appears again. And then we can start our Mammoth container. And if we refresh the Mammoth web page, we get the same data. That's all for how to manually backing up and restoring data. We will talk more about automatically backing up in a later video. And that's all for today's video. Please consider subscribing for content like this. The configurations in this video is published on GitHub, and the link is in description below. Thank you for watching.